<clears throat> testing, testing. All right, looks good. So welcome to anybody who's joining me. Uh, it's just just uh, went live a few seconds ago. I'm just gonna wait wait for a couple people to jump into chat before I really jump in. Uh, the idea today was um, that I've been on Soul Herder for the last nine months or so, maybe ten months, I guess at this point. Um, realized um, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, that I just missed playing Merfolk. Uh, that's kind of important. Uh, hey, Tux, welcome to the stream. Uh, thanks very much for joining me. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to be pretty rusty for sure. Uh, I was just saying, uh, I realized that, you know, I missed I missed playing Merfolk. And also, you know, I'm sure that some of my followers, subscribers and whatnot, probably miss seeing me play Merfolk. Uh, I've been kind of doing my own thing, you know. Uh, for me, uh, everybody everybody finds different stuff in Magic to love, and for me, uh, finding a new deck to to sort of develop and tweak. Like I love when new cards came out, like for Merfolk, like Benthic Biomancer. I was so excited about that. Uh, wanted to figure out the best way to sort of build around it and incorporate it into our strategy. Um, lean more on like things like deprive and echoing truth so we can hold up mana with like merfolk trickster and then activate ben if you know just just working with new cards new ideas and so when soul herder came out for me it was like kind of incredible and overwhelming because um you know people had worked on blink strategies in modern before but uh didn't really have what it takes to compete and it seemed like soul herder might push it in that direction particularly ephemerate might and it's just been uh, a fun ride for the past 10 months or so. But anyhow, today I wanted to jump back in and play some Merfolk and uh, maybe stream, uh, maybe maybe make a regular Merfolk streaming night. Uh, I do Soul Herder on Mondays right now. I might just do like a Wednesday night uh, Merfolk stream. Um, yeah, no, Tux, we've talked about this in the, uh, in the Soul Herder channel a bunch. Um, I don't love it either, but... There's a few sides to it, right? Like on the one hand, if it's if it keeps the name, then people think Soul Herder is super important. They're always going to inquisition it out of our hand and stuff when it's really not the most important card. So there's a slight strategic benefit to keeping the name the way it is. But the bigger the bigger issue is just that once a name gets out into the wild, it, it tends to stick. I'm I'm sure you're aware of how that works. Um, so anyhow, the the approach I was going to take here, so this is just like an old, the last time I glanced at Merfolk, I just threw together like a pretty old school uh, basic list with um, pretty familiar cards. I think at that point, the sort of newish additions were Brazen Borrower and Force of Negation. Uh, my idea today is that the forces can go in the sideboard. I want the Deprives in the main. Um... I'm not really. I don't really think I want to run brazen borrowers. I I know it's it's very popular right now um, in Merfolk, but I want to do the tempo bear thing. So I'm gonna get harbinger back in here, um, and I'm going to run all of the tide binders in the sideboard. Pretty close to being main deckable, I'd say. Uh, between all of the, the Lur uh, Black Green Lurus decks, all the Prowess and Burn that's around, all the Ponza. Uh, it seems like Tidebinder could be pretty good in the main, but I don't want to get paired against a bunch of uh, like Urza decks and have Tidebinder just be like a Grizzly Bear. That would be pretty terrible. Um, I am going to try Chalice uh, because I'm going to trim my one-drop Merfolk. Um, don't really want them to die to... Um, Renin six. Also, they're just not the best magic cards. Um, um, you still need non-land, non-land bounce. You mean like uh, something like Echoing Truth? Um, so on the sideboard here, um, I'm not sure if just remember this is this is from the older the older build. Uh, this is just a I was just mentioning like um. 
a shell that I had thrown together before, but this is getting pretty close to what my thought was uh, for today's stream. Not, not the sideboard yet, um, although the sideboard's also sort of close, I think. Um, I do want the 12 Lords. I do want the 8 Tempo Bears. Um, I do want, I think, all the Cs. I know some people have been moving away from Cs. I haven't been keeping up with Nikachu, but I think he's been on like two with two in the sideboard. But maybe that's just like a blue-green build. And blue-green, I think, has been generally on fewer Cs because they can just punch through with big guys and not really need Island Walk. Um... Uh, Tux, I was thinking about putting some bounce like in the sideboard, um, or maybe even going... Yeah, I haven't really been seeing in Staring Bridge in the format, but maybe that's because I haven't been playing Merfolk and people don't really bring it out against me, um, or bring it in against me. Um, yeah, all right, so let's trim one Harbinger and, and bring in, uh, it's a reasonable suggestion. Also gives me a bit more to do with an Aether Vial on three. I currently just have the... Oh, I want to get Master of Waves in here. Um, I know you said that it's it's sad or whatever, but that's how I roll. Um, so we're at 61 right now with 20 lands. I think 20 lands is where I want to be. Um, could go down one more Harbinger for starters. Um Yeah, I have seen in Staring Bridge like here and there, but it's just, uh, you know, like one out of every 80 matches or something. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just kind of aggressive, normal kind of merfolk strategy. Um, a little bit controlling uh, between the Deprives and the Chalice, trying to get to that later stage of the game. I don't really only want one Master of Waves. I want, I'd like more than that, but I have to sort of figure out the balance real quick. Um, I don't want, I don't think I want three Mutavaults. Um, I, sorry, I don't want four Mutavaults with, um, with all the Deprives. It's generally okay, but I think I'll go with three. Um, don't, uh, as far as Waterlog Groves go, I don't know. There's a bunch of Bernie stuff in the format right now. I, I think two is probably fine. Uh, 14 Islands, certainly fine against um, Blood Moon and such. Um, Seas is a potential place to shave. There's a lot of blue in the format. I know that, um, I know people have been trimming on Seas. Um, don't really love that. I know the Merfolk, um, com particularly compared to Soul Herder, it doesn't really play well along the card advantage sort of axis. And Spreading Seas sort of helps us there a little bit. Uh, messes up people's lands, uh, gets Devotion going for Master of Waves. So I'd like, I'd like, all right, so let's go three Spreading Seas and, and two Master of Waves, maybe. I mean, this is just kind of a sketch of a deck at this point. Um, so four Tidebinder Mages. Um, Gonna come in against green black um, and and burn type stuff. Um, I guess we probably take brazen borrower out in those matchups. Uh, tempo sort of bouncy stuff is not amazing. Um, I think in those matchups, and I mean master voice is gonna shine in the red matchups. I guess regery comes out in the burn matchup. Okay, so as for the sideboard, um, the only unconsidered sort of choice here is Dismember. That could definitely be something else. Uh, it could be like Echoing Truth. Um, I'm not really sure, honestly. Uh, like I, I could go 3-3-3-3, three, 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 uh, three, like 5-3-0s like or just like 4-4-4-3 four, 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 seems fine also. I um, actually feel a little bit more comfortable with that approach. Um, I'm just trying to think about what I what I would expect to see in this league, uh, based on what I've seen in in the last handful of leagues with Soul Herder. Uh, Neo Form just pops up randomly, and I'd really love to be prepared for that deck. So the main deck deprives plus the um, the other counter spells should help against any of those kinds of spell based combo decks. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. I guess I mean. 
it's pretty close talks. Um, I guess that's true. Luris, Luris is a consideration. But a lot of those decks have been playing Unearth, uh, in which case, you know, they have to have it, I guess. But Unearth is a one drop, right? So I guess Chalice could hit it in theory. And I'm not taking Chalice out against Luris decks. You can drop it on zero or on one and get them a little bit. Um, let's see, if I trim the two Harbingers, creature count is 23. It's getting fairly low. Um, with just 22 merfolk. All right, so let's say that I put um, the two dismembers in the main. That, that leaves uh, three slots in the sideboard for more stuff. Um, so continuing to think about matchups that, that have come up a lot lately, um, there's like this... Um, Luris Scales deck. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of Hardened Scales, uh, in which case Hercules Recall might be decent. Also got like Urza decks. But I don't know that, that uh, artifacts are big enough in the format that Hercules Recall would really be uh, merited at this point. Do have to keep in mind the bit of a nonbo with relic and chalice um, in certain matchups. Um, yeah, yeah, he's definitely run like very few creatures before. So uh, this is getting pretty close. I just got to figure out what my last few spots want to be. Um, a lot of Ponza. We already have Tidebinder Mage for that matchup. Um, hmm. Maybe like Revoker um, for Tron, that kind of thing. Maybe Pithing Needle. Pithing Needle has impressed me. It's really good against. Well, Jund is a bit less favored at this point uh, with with Luris in the picture. Um, over like people are just playing black green. A little more bounce on the board. Uh, what do you think about Repeal, or should I play Echoing Truth? Um, oh yeah, true. Uh, for the to not go with the Nonbo. Um, I mean, Spreading Seas helps against Tron. We've we're all, I'm only on three here, though. Um, of course, the counter spells also help. Uh, ceremonious rejection helps against um, helps against those artifact decks. Also helps against uh, Tron. I've got four of these in my um, in my Soul Herder sideboard right now. So I might do like um, this to hedge on you know the the bit of a nombo with Chalice, and uh, I just haven't been running into that much graveyard uh, shenanigans. No? You don't think we'll need rejection? It is it, it does put us up to eleven counter spells. Alright. So I don't know. Tron is a Tron is a tough deck. All right, let me let me go with like three truth. I'll put one ceremonious rejection. <laughs> I think the card's pretty good. Uh, all right, cool. So um, I feel pretty decent with this. It's just a merfolk deck. Uh, got a bunch of merfolk. Got some interaction. Some stuff in the sideboard. Let's go ahead and jump into a league, see what we get paired against. So that is the name of this deck, I think, Stock Folk. <laughs> Not, nothing's really stock these days anymore. Kind of in a weird place with Merfolk these days. I got really close to a 5-0 yesterday with Soul Herder. Um, I just got 
just got beaten by ad nauseum. This is really annoying because when I saw the, the pairing, I just knew immediately I was going to lose. Like I did my best. I was only one turn off. <laughs> Coral Helm Commander. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's a good call with uh with Chalice typically, Coral Helm, but um oh, this looks good. Oh my god, I'm playing against uh Orion right off the bat. So, you know, we have to keep this. I'd rather have an Ether Vial in hand, but and looks good. Uh I guess depending on what we what we're paired against, um can either go turn to C's and or just pass uh, turn to turn to Chalice pass with Trickster to Deprive up. Um, somebody plays a Monodork against me, I can just dismember it. It has been a while. So I'd love to not see Vile here. What seems... Uh, so, yeah, I think this is pretty dismemberable. They've got Cavern down, so obviously Chalice a little bit less uh, important. Um, I forget, Tux, uh, wh what's the thought against humans? Uh, do, we, do we hit the, the dorks, or do we just save our removal for the, uh, the big boys? Mantis Rider, um, Deputy, I don't know. All right. Yeah, I mean that seems reasonable. I could I could hold on to this for a while. Man, uh, this is not the best hand against uh turn one cavern of souls. <laughs> actually pretty poor. Um Oh, but I do have the spreading seas. So I think I think I'll just go with spreading seas for now. They don't have a ton of pressure um turn these counter spells sort of online. Hopefully draw into another land. There it is. Uh, unfortunately, slightly painful land. I mean, it's definitely humans. Uh, <laughs> but yes, you're right that it's, it's interesting that it's Orion. They usually play that uh, five color thing, right? Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, I guess we just pass here. Hey, pessimistic scientist. Uh, what's up is that I'm playing Merfolk, which uh, is pretty exciting for me. It's been a long time. I'm going to be super rusty. The thought here is that I want to hold up Deprive, uh, second main phase, so I didn't, I didn't want to spend two mana for Trickster. Um, champion's fine. Yeah, you know, I, I I wanted to just jump in with sort of OG, like Merfolk styles. Um, get reacquainted with the deck uh, before before I start to try stuff like Luris. Luris does seem pretty strong. It kind, it's the kind of card that bums me out. Um, there's there's going to be different um, opinions on cards like Luris, but for me, I just want to play Merfolk. I don't want to play like a bunch of random stuff like... Okay, what's happening here? Yeah, we can deprive that guy. So, uh, opponent down to two cards. Got some tiny stuff on the board. Another trickster's pretty nice. Um, 
I mean, uh, champion kind of prices them into playing things first main. Clocks are pretty much identical right now. This is not the kind of matchup that would ever go to time. Sort of fine just trading a trickster. Actually, I, I'm kind of fine taking two again. Um, if they don't play anything, I'll just flash in a trickster. Next turn, we'll have four lands, hopefully, and can... Um... Yeah. I mean, I guess they could have, like, Coco. They didn't cast Orion, so they must have something. Um... You know what? Hang on. I'm just going to... I'm just going to keep... Uh... Keep my powder dry for a bit. There's that, the, the, the Muta Vault kind of trying to spoil everything. I do have a lot of intensive mana costs right now. So I think it's a Coco right now. Or maybe not. Man, I should I should have played this chalice. Um, gonna let the hierarch go. Maybe they're just sitting on reflector mages. It sort of makes sense, or like a deputy or something like that. It's going to attack as a 2 3. It's pretty decent. But they didn't want to. Um, let's see. Lord seems good. I'm sorry, Tox, what are you what is the point you're making that it's not supposed to do that much? Not really sure what the opponent is doing with Urian. It's just like a free four five, I guess. Uh did they Okay. Did they just find a, a planes, I guess? Okay. Oh, is this is this the Coco that we've all been waiting for? Yeah, get that noise out of here. All right, so I mean, we're sort of set to take a bit of a hit from this champion here. Opponent can tap, basically tap out to play Urian. We still have another Trickster in hand. Is this like a, uh, hmm, oh. Uh, yeah, this could be a little bit rough. The fact that two of the last cards in their hand were Collected Company and Reflector Mage, it's going to be a little bit tough to, I mean, we can draw Master of Waves. That would totally stabilize. Okay. It's a pretty nice combination of cards they had in their hand. Okay, they're at 11. Um, Master of the Pearl Trident off the top. We can only send for 6 this turn. Um, I mean, do I have to think we board Chalice out in this matchup? All right, Lord of Atlantis just shut off by this card. All right, I think we should have another turn here, but um, 
things are getting pretty grim. They've got uh, Urian. Oh, Urian can blink Reflector Mage. <laughs> this is pretty dirty. Game looks like it's probably over. Hope, I mean, I can hope that the opponent kind of forgets about Urian. They, uh, they, they do that sometimes. I've played against like a Luris guy where he absolutely should have played Luris. Like he had bas basically no other plays. You did not draw another Collected Company. Oh, okay, he's casting Urian, I'm pretty sure. There it is. So Reflector Mage, what, going to bounce Trickster, I guess. Means that I can't cast it next turn. Means I can't stop Urian. Means... Um, Uh, oh, it bounced, bounced Silvergill. Interesting. Well, I, I still can't play that. Um, oh, yeah, that's true, of course, because it resets. Um, but they didn't bounce Trickster. They bounced Silvergill, which, which is the smarter play, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Nothing I can do about this flyer. Um, no more access to Island Walk. Uh, a couple dead cards in hand. Um, all right. Uh, GG. Actually, you know what? Hang on a sec. I can cycle the Waterlog Grove, if nothing else. Yeah, all right. Okay, pretty rough first game um, against humans. It was. It looked like a really nice opening hand. It just uh, the matchup didn't really uh, make the hand that great. So tide binders can come in. Echoing truths can come in. Wow, I haven't sideboarded with Merfolk in a long time. <laughs> this feels weird. Okay, uh, what's bad? Um, I guess all the deprives are suboptimal. All the creatures are going to be pretty good. Removal, bounce, kind of interaction stuff. So currently at 59 cards, I uh, can bring in um, one other card. So what's the, what's the 60th best card? Got to think it's probably a Deprive. All right. My Orion, um, my Orion Soul Herder deck just destroys humans. I haven't lost to human humans since starting to play the deck. I haven't lost to Ponza. There are certain decks that it just lines up crazy well uh, with. Once mulliganing to five. Um, hopefully they keep a hand with like um, kite sail. <laughs> Don't bring in like choke. That would be kind of kind of annoying. Play a, play a hierarch right now. That would probably be best. Come on, hierarch. Let's go. Yes. That worked out well. All right. I mean, yeah, that guy's going to make some mana, but they missed their land drop. Um, I'm just going to play Regery. Um, could, like, uh, like, upkeep, tap their Abyssin's Pilgrim, but we're the beatdown right now. That's pretty good.
You're okay trading? Well, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I don't want to um, go in with Rejury, but I could also just play Trickster now and tap down two of their dudes. Uh, but it seems better just Trickstering during their um, their upkeep and tapping all their stuff. Um, they could have Coco in response to my, my Trickster. Oh, no, they can't, because this guy doesn't untap. Um, I can tap their lands. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, Yeah, opponent just scooped. <laughs> That's pretty good. Want every game uh, for the rest of the league to be just like that. Yeah, that was a fun Merfolk game right there. Let's run it back. And being on the draw, bit of a bummer. Opponent did mulligan to five. <laughs> So hopefully uh, we don't have to mulligan this game. Be nice to see an ether vial. I haven't haven't played an ether vial in half a year or something like that. D double regery is is pretty cool. <laughs> it's definitely been a while since I've gotten two regeries on the board. Yuck. When it begins with seven, uh, yeah. A, A, beauty. I always get excited when uh, I, I forget about my upkeep stop, and then I'm like, oh, is the opponent like passing before they play a land? When I get priority all of a sudden, but... No, I just had to stop on their upkeep. All right. All right, well, we've got some cards. We've got some cards. Um, they've, they've got some, uh, some ramp going on, though. Historic. I don't even know, like, what historic is. <laughs> What's being named? What is being named? Silvergill Adept? Spreading Seas? They already have an island. They wouldn't name Spreading Seas. Um, <laughs> I mean, Meddling Mage is pretty bad against Merfolk. We have that redundancy thing going on. Oh, that's awesome. Regery is on Arena right now. <laughs> that might be a reason to actually start playing Arena. I, I've actually literally never played Arena before. Opponent's like burning his brain. He's like, what do I want to name with this meddling mage? <laughs> it was the most important card. Uh, I haven't played any Master of Waves yet, so... Uh, this is sort of slow out of, um, out of the human's deck. I feel like I kind of have to play something on my main phase next turn rather than hold up Deprive. Um, dismember. Dismember. Interesting. <laughs> um, okay, I was saying I should play something on my main phase because if they're going to like hold up Coco or something, they would just pass on my turn and then I would waste my mana. So uh, potentially could just um, Tidebinder this, uh, this Noble Hierarch. A... All right. Um, I kind of, I kind of like uh, tide binding just to slow them down a little bit to the extent possible. Uh, although we do want to draw lands, so yeah, I'm just. Ugh. You know what though? Tide binder is like our nice interaction against their stuff, like uh, Mantis Rider.
I think I, I think maybe I just want to play Silvergill Adept. Put up a little wall against this guy being able to attack. Because, um, I mean, if he attacks in against Tidebinder, I probably wouldn't, uh, probably wouldn't do that trade. I think Silvergill seems fine here. Um, let's see if they play something. Mm, I don't know. Slowing them down seems pretty good. It might just keep them off of something like Mantis Rider. So if I play Silvergill, I have to reveal something. Maybe they can uh, <coughs> mage it then, but I do have Vile. Um, I think I'm just going to go with Tidebinder here. The, the only thing that would be really bad would be Deputy on Vile right now. And you know, they could very, very possibly have that. All right, this looks like a Mantis Rider to me, but it could be anything. It could be a, <laughs> could be a Reflector Mage, could be a Deputy. That's a Deputy because that's uh, colorless. Oh, it's a human spell. Okay, well, I can deal with Reflector Mage. Because I do have Vile. Land, I guess, would be ideal here. Mutavolt in particular. That's fine, though. I... So now I think we hold Tidebinder up in case they have Mantis Rider. Could also Vile in a Lord for better trades. At this point, I think leaving, uh, leaving Hierarch alone is fine. They could have another land if they have like Coco. Uh, they've hit their land drop so far. So Mutavault off the top would probably be the nuts. Um, but I have to assume that we're not going to draw land. Vile in a two drop, Vile in a two drop on my upkeep. Do the ether vile trick. They've got a bit of pressure here, though. Hey. It's like double lieutenant now. It is, it looks like it's all ground forces, though, for the time being. So I'm sort of happy to throw Silvergill. Happy enough to throw Silvergill under the bus. Uh, I could trade with the Meddling Mage. Um, set to take 11 here. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Silver Girl's only got the one devotion, so I don't even think I really want to use this member this game. Um, what is Abyss? That's a that's a reference that I don't get. Oh, he didn't even attack with the meddling mage. It's so bad. So bad opponent. So now I may, maybe now maybe I just take eight. Have bigger buffer dudes next turn. Yeah, I can take eight, I think, for now. Oh, yeah.
Charming Prince is going to Reflector Mage me. It's kind of obnoxious. But then I can Vile in Silvergill. Oh, okay. Lieutenant. Make the creatures bigger. So land is still awesome here. Um, immediately stabilizes. They did not play a land that turn. So um, totally possible that just Tidebinder Mage on Hierarch is still good. Um, Trickster is is okay here. Um, I think we're just on defense until next turn. Hopefully they don't have deputy for for my lords. Um, still don't think. I mean, Tidebinder is obviously not the best option right now. Yeah, so just pass, and I guess I'm gonna tap down their champion at the beginning of combat. I mean, if they have, um, like, that Kessig Malcontents card, I could deprive, but then I think I might just be dead to their attacks. Might just be dead to their attacks anyway. They've got some... Oh, we'll have a 4-4 in a second. One cracking their fetch. Oh, they're going to cast Orion. But they shouldn't do that pre-combat. That would be kind of awkward. Oh, they're collect casting Collected Company. Um, I, I kind of have to let this resolve. Um, all right, you got it, opponent. Last card in hand, Collected Company. Good running. Jesus, Jesus Christ, what, what rips? <laughs> it's so insane. All right, the Mantis Rider itself won't kill us right now. But I think the Thalia's Lieutenant might do the job. Ugh. No, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure we're dying. I mean, I could line up blocks maybe to not... No, because this is in the air, and the smallest guy is three. So block everything, take seven. Jesus. Well, I mean, that was like... I mean, they have lots of good things they can hit. They could have hit Phantasmal Image, Mantis Riders, Reflector Mages. They could hit a lot of stuff. Uh, so any, a land off the top would have stabilized for sure, um, but we didn't get there. Um, kind of rough. All right, good games, opponent. I mean, things didn't feel too bad. Um, we we had a weird hand in uh in the first game. Extra chalices, deprives, things like that. Um, game two was amazing, and then uh, I don't know. Game three, the opponent just had good cards, so we we mulliganed to 6 the hand was good um ether vial was pretty awesome but we were on the draw i think if we were on the play that game we probably would have won almost definitely would have won because i would have had ether vial on 4 i would have been able to cast the tidebinder mage um anyhow
Yeah, being on the play. It's good stuff. Okay, speaking of being on the play, opponent on the play. <sighs> Weird Merfolk hands. This is a keep because Waterlog Grove just replaces itself. It's like a, a decent mulligan to six. No, no, uh, companion. I'm gonna hold that dismember for a minute. Let's see what they're doing with this Birds of Paradise. One second, guys. My wife uh, made some pizza dough to make pizza this evening, and so uh, I had to put it in the refrigerator after one hour. So that was an alarm, uh, just, just telling me to move the pizza dough into the refrigerator. Is this like Uro? Oh my god. All right, well, I think we're just going to lose. <laughs> I guess if it's a... Uh... We can like upkeep, tap their birds. That seems okay. Upkeep, tap their birds. Uh, and just do our best to attack Sahili down. <laughs> it's a random matchup. This deck should be running uh, Orion for sure. They put a card on top. Yeah, I well, you know, yeah, upkeep tap the birds seems fine. Next turn I can just like dismember the birds. Um or I am gonna save the dismember for the, the cat, I guess. Um yeah, anyhow, let's just tap a, tap some birds of paradises. Remand, but then you know, then then they're not comboing off this turn. Right, so Lord still doesn't get Sahili uh, attack down yet. Is this Teferi, or is opponent just passing? All right. So I'm, I'm guessing now uh, we're going to cast a Silvergill, reveal a Silvergill, leave up one mana for Dismember. I'm going to wait to play my land, because um, maybe I'll draw a Mutavault. That would be the nuts here. Mm, Trickster's also kind of cool, but I'm pretty sure they're going to hit their fourth land. Um, and we do have Dismember up anyway. All right, I'm going to go after Sahili, even though... It might be redundant uh, since we can kill her next turn. Um, well, if that's the case, maybe I should just attack the opponent, right? Like, she's going to go up to six, and then if I don't lose, I'm going to untap with nine island walking power. Well, dealing with her is great. I would love to deal with her, um, but... All right, let's just attack her for now. Opponent's sitting on three mana. Here's a Kowaddle. Um, so we could dismember that, but I'm going to try the Lord first. Yeah, I get you, Tux. Makes sense. So now if they have Path for the Lord, I guess I'll let... Oh my god. Um... I guess I have to let this trickster kind of eat it and then and then dismember like a Felidar guardian. 
uh, trickstering it would have been would have been reasonable for sure. Um, but now I'm in a tough spot. Yeah, trick string would have been the better call, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let this trade happen. I mean, we lose to this matchup because of the combo, and hmm, they did top. Um, Yeah, Trickster was a better play, obviously. I wasn't expecting so much interaction, honestly, um, since it's a combo deck. But I guess that's how they're set up. That was a bit of a blowout. Uh, oh, they did ramp us a little bit. Opponent ticking up Sahili. Is this the uh, the guardian here? Time raveler. Well, that <laughs> that kind of hurts us a lot. Uh, all right, I guess this is fine. So then maybe I kill the birds. Um, I might as well just kill these birds. Because they've got the Sahili, as I'm not going to be able to use the Dismember when they cast um, when they cast the Felidar Guardian. To fairy bouncing Silvergill is not the end of the world. They have something else to cast. I mean, anything they can cast for one mana at this point is is good for us. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good that's a good card to have drawn. Another decent one. Oh wait, it's not a good card for, at, for the time being because of Teferi. Um so we do need to deal with Teferi, we do need to deal with Sahili. Um but we do have a trickster. Uh we do have Island Walk coming up. Um we can hope that they don't have another path. Since Deprive is offline for the time being, I should just cast more creatures. Of course, they can just win. Okay. You know, go nuts, opponent. The board would look a lot different if I had played Trickster instead of the, uh, the Lord. Through the Vile that other turn. Okay, this looks promising. So Healy ultimating us doesn't really matter, right?
Okay. All right. So we're in we're in slightly slightly better spot than we were a moment ago. Opponent bottoms with Sahili. If they do nothing, uh, we can cycle Waterlogged Grove. They didn't path last turn, um, so Lord uh, would put 11 power on the battlefield. Opponent with the Sacred Foundry untapped. Interesting. I think this is worth countering, um, but then we could just attack him down. So I think I let this resolve. So he is fate sealing me. He left it on top. Um, okay, opponent left that nice gift for us on top of the board, uh, on top of the deck. Why don't you want to crack the grove? I like cracking the grove. So, uh, oh, they do have a, they have a path, I guess. Um, they seem to want to wait for it, though. If they wait, that's huge for us. Okay, now we can kill both of their Planeswalkers and counter their path. Seems good. Nice. They weren't going to do anything. I guess they could have cast a, a path, but they didn't. They've only got one card in hand. Jace, Jace, Sahili, Sahili. Yeah, opponent. Should have done it on your own turn. But I guess they were playing around Force of Negation, so upside to playing Deprive, and that should probably be the game. Well, they were playing around Force, right? Which it totally seems reasonable. Opponent knows I have this Ether Vial, I might as well play it. We don't have Lethal on board yet. If we draw another Lord, it will certainly be Lethal. Okay, opponent with the Sahili Rai um, can just kill her right away. Scries to the bottom. Zero cards in hand. Opponent scoops. Um, wait a second. I what was I saying about force? If they oh you're right. If they pass to me, then I still have force up. That's true because I had more than enough lands. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Just seems bad by the opponent. Like, why are they passing? It uh, makes no sense. Like, if they let me on tap, I could have another... Um, I don't know. It just, just seems pretty bad. So... Yeah, no, you're right. It doesn't play around Force, because I, I had the mana. Okay, so Tidebinder Mages seem fine. Uh, tap down their dorks. Um, the forces seem fine. Uh, relic, unnecessary. Truth seems good. Um, is, Ch is Chalice good? Do they run stuff like Serum Visions? They have Astrolabes. Astrolabes and Birds. Spreading Seas is unnecessary. Um... But even if they Lightning Helixed on their turn, I, would, I still would have been able to kill Sahili. They'd still have a Jace on board. It was a misplay by the opponent. Um, 
but kind of easy to understand why they would do it. People just like to wait to the last second to do everything. I think they forgot that Merfolk plays counter spells. Oh yeah, Ma Mateo, you just said the same exact thing. So anyhow, let me uh, hunker down here. Um, I like all the creatures. Um, we have to hustle a little bit here. Actually, maybe maybe the tricksters are not so important. Um, doesn't really stop their combo. Uh, I can trim their combo pieces. I don't know. I can trim two chalices. Um, maybe one force. I don't know. One regery. <laughs> I don't know. Just letting myself get too low on time here. Ugh. I mean, we've got a counter spell. Um, if we draw like an island off the top, it's a decent hand. But we're, st I don't know, still going to be backed up on land. So have to mulligan the one lander. Just waiting on the opponent. Yeah, they do run. You're right, they run. Not, and not just removal, uh, but like burn. Uh, opponent is keeping their seven. I have to mulligan. Uh, I think I'm sort of... I was going to say priced into keeping this. Maybe bottoming one of these deprives on the draw. But I think I might just have to mulligan again. I mean, Force deals with Sahili, which gives me a lot of time. But if I'm mulliganing, then I'm already low on cards. Silvergill can sort of try to help that a little bit. Mulliganing to five just seems a losing proposition. Um, maybe I just put Master on the bottom for now. I know this is a sketchy keep, but it's against a combo deck, combo control deck, and um, well, we'll have to see how it goes. I'm up a game, um, so hopefully we'll have a chance to have better luck in game three if, if it goes to that. We could draw Vile or land here. Okay, another force is maybe not the worst thing in the world. A. Opponent mono leaking. Oh, ice fan coatle. Okay. I mean, you know, things could be going worse. Opponent just passing. Interesting. <laughs> triple force, triple blue card. Land? Oh. These are cards that can do things if the game goes on. Don't really want to trade for the Coatl. Opponent must have like another Coatl in hand or something, just passing with three mana. Okay. Uh, 
this seems like a deck that might just want to run Orion for sure. Um, okay, they have a Felidar Guardian now. Blue mana would be kind of cool. No blue mana. Uh, so I think, I don't know. I mean, I was on the fence about cracking in last turn. Like, we do need to present some kind of clock. Um, so I feel kind of fine attacking with the two silver gills here. Like, it means next turn, if nothing else, we can just... Um, we can just activate Muta Vault and attack. I mean, if they have another Ice Fang, the, these Silver Gills have already replaced themselves, and I don't know that waiting for an Island for Island Walk is the best, because then they have removal for the Island Walk Lord anyway. I am going to have to discard here. Um, so I guess one of these Deprives is probably the eighth worst card. Maybe maybe the tide binder at this point? I don't know. Well, I didn't want the Mutavault to die to the uh, are you telling me to attack with Mutavault? I didn't want Mutavault to die to Ice Fang Coatl. Um that's that's a super capitalized Mutavault there. <laughs> um I like the counter spells against um against this kind of combo we control deck, so I'll just pitch that Tidebinder Mage. Oh, a comment on it existing in the deck. I don't know. It does good things, it does bad things. I mean, this is a uh, Lightning Helix here. I might still not want to activate Mutavault yet. That's pretty good, though. Leaving Regiri on the board. Interesting. They do have a Felidar Guardian, can like blink Oath of Nyssa. Or they can just go for another... Uh... Possible that just leaving up Hardcast Force of Negation would have been best there. Maybe I'll do that next turn. But it's been a weird game so far, starting on one land. We know they have one Felidar Guardian in hand. What is this going to reveal? Hallowed Fountain. I feel like that's probably not the best rip for them. Would be pretty good if they had Urian, though. All right, tapping out means I can cast the Lord and get in for some damage. Um, could even cast the Lord, untap an island, and attack with Mutavault as well. Oh, it's Jace. Hey, Jace. Um, so he's going to try to bounce my dude. Um, not really feeling that. So just not letting Jace resolve seems like a good idea. Um, here, I can counter Pitching Deprive. Cast the Lord. I, I don't know. Um, I guess I'll see if I draw a blue card. Could just pitch the... Mm, pitching Deprive seems okay. Pitch the second force. I don't know. <laughs> I guess so. We're getting low on cards. I can see it. All right, so we know one of the cards, um, they didn't play their Hallowed Fountain. Are they going to just bolt the Regiri now? 
kind of annoying. They still have a Hallowed Fountain in hand. They have a Felidar Guardian in hand. <laughs> Why would they play this untapped and not just immediately kill him? Oh, all right, Pathing. Uh, well, we can counter that and uh, put an island back on the battlefield, attack with Mutavault. Now we know the two cards in their hand are Felidar Guardian and Hallowed Fountain. So they could rip Saheeli Rai off the top. Um, this is going to let them blink Oath of Nyssa. One, two, three, four. And then they have another mana for Saheeli Rai. Um, I mean, I don't see how I'm winning if I let this path resolve. All right, well, we just have to hope that they fade Saheeli Rai on their draw step and the Oath Dig. Um, only going to have seven. Oh, they, if they take two from Hallowed Fountain here, I don't see why they would do that, though. Unless they had... Uh, maybe they take they shock off Hallowed Fountain to play like Teferi, but if Teferi would bounce the Regery. Um, so I'm just presenting seven next turn as things stand. If I draw another Lord, I should have lethal. All right, we know they have, what did they reveal? They revealed Stomping Ground and they played Stomping Ground. So now we know the Hallowed Fountain in their hand. Mm. So here, uh, I mean, they played it tapped. Um, if I mean, we might as well just tap the Felidar Guardian, right? Like, we have Island Walk, but if they kill the Lord, better for them to not be able to block, right? All right, well, it's pretty close at this point. Top deck time. Double top deck time. And if they haven't found a Saheeli all game, they've still got four of them in the deck. They could play a bunch of things that draw cards. Well, we knew that was in the hand. I'm on one card. They know I can't force. I'm tapped out. All right, well, um, one card. That's a good one. I'm going to play around Mono Leak by playing the land. And I guess it doesn't, again, doesn't really matter. Uh, let's just tap their Ice Fang Coatl. It was a good call pitching the second force, I think, because, all right, opponent has conceded. So I believe that puts us 1-1-1 one, one and one for the league so far. Uh, we lost to humans and then beat Sahili. So um, let me run to the bathroom real quick, and then we'll jump into the third round. Be right back.
All right. So I actually want to check something real quick um, in the replay. I want to look at the opening hands um, and and chat with you guys. Because I don't think any of you guys really commented on the, uh, the opening hand of that second game. So this was my 7, and I, th I think it's pretty obviously not a keep because it's one land without Aether Vial, and the land is um, a pain land. So not, not ideal for a number of reasons. It does have the Force. It's got a bunch of interaction for uh, the slow-ish slow combo control deck. Uh, so for me, this was a pretty clear mulligan. Just want to check with you guys, make sure you think it's a clear mulligan, given the matchup. Um, now, you know, the three drop's going to take a while to get to. Yeah, snap mulligan. I agree. But then, I feel like a lot of people would mulligan the six. But again, I think it's pretty matchup specific here. Like... I've got the I've got the counter magic, and it's that's one of the most important things in the matchup. And um, you know, this one lander without Ether Vial got us there, and it was, I mean, it was fairly comfortable. So I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, would you guys mulligan it? Yeah, it, it is a hard decision, but I mean, it's not a hand that we we love to keep. I mean, if one of those deprives was a second land, it would be amazing. But definitely interesting to think about this stuff. Um, I think we we ended up like set the second draw basically was a, was a muta vault and and that set us up perfectly. So I put the master at the bottom. They played an astrolabe, um, and then you know I whiffed on lands, drew another force, but then I ripped muta vault, which was just perfect. Um, and then I think it was a second silver gill, and so things you know the rest is history. So um, it ended up being a decent keep. Um, was just curious what your guys' opinion was. All right. I mean, it's fine that you hate Mute of All Talks. I mean, I, I don't think it's so much... Like, is it so much worse now than it was five years ago or four years ago in Merfolk? I mean, every result ever with Merfolk ran four Mute of Alts. I mean, it's... It's a free island walking merfolk, you know, and we've got Aether Vial. We can play our creatures on uh, with, with that with colorless mana being on the battlefield just fine. Well, what, what makes it so much worse now? Well, this is the awkwardest of hands. Opponent says, "Good luck, have fun." Uh, what do you guys think about this hand? Um, if it were Malda 6 with, with an extra island over there, um, it would be an easy keep, so I think it's probably a keep. Uh... Yeah, I think I'll just keep it. Doesn't feel great. Opponent mulligans to six. So, uh, welcome to the stream, everybody. Thanks for joining me um, today. I know I haven't played Merfolk in forever. I apologize for that. Opponent kept their six. Um, okay, well, we're going to get wrecked now by... Oh, maybe not. <laughs> I thought we were going to get wrecked by hand disruption, but Aether Vial is an interesting one. They have no companion. We drew another island, which is probably the worst possible draw. See, if that island were an ether, uh, a muta vault, that would be pretty good right here. Wouldn't it be Tux? Right? Yeah, no, I get that rule, but um, there's, there's also a fine line, I think, between keepable sixes. Like, 
Hold on, let me concentrate here. Is this Renin? What are we? What are we playing against here? Oh God, it's goblins. All right, well at least we have some removal. So um, deprive. I mean, we could lose if I tap out. I think, but I, th I still think I have to tap out. Also, this makes it a little bit harder for them to um, explosives engineer us, making the, the, the toughness a little bit higher. But I mean, if they have a goblin and an explosives expert, uh, one of our lords is going to eat it. It's Grum Gully. So is this the combo? We're just getting comboed out right now. Is this like a sack outlet at this point? I don't think we... Okay, so munitions expert. Um, fair enough. We can at least kill Grum Gully. And then we're um, not, not so far behind, I guess. Uh, Chalice with Ether Vial. I guess we just... I guess we just name one, right? It, it, uh, it hits their... Um, Have to hit uh, Grum Gully here. I think Chalice on one is okay. Um, yeah, Chalice hasn't been wonderful. Um, I could also just dismember and hold with Deprive, but they do have, um, I think it's like Skirk Prospector or something. That's um, a combo piece as their sack outlet. I mean, they have Ether Vial. I think just getting Chalice down on one and uh, dismembering Grum Gully in response to either casting something or violing. I might as well just kill it now, honestly. So that they can't respond with Ether Vial and get a bigger creature. Uh, no, because if I had to play, um, I had to play, um, Regery, so I had no mana to use Dismember. Uh, but yes, if you could get rid of one of their go uh, goblins with it on the stack, then the, the Lord would have lived. But yeah, I had no mana up, and if I hadn't played Regery, the Munitions Expert would have just killed my 2-2 Lord. So, yeah, I'm just gonna kill Grum Gully right now. And we'll hope to draw into a Master of Waves, and all will be well in the world. Okay, so Goblin's player has two more lands in hand. Ah, uh, good old Ether Vial trick. So this gets to destroy my Lord if it wants, or destroy the Ether Vial. I mean, the, sorry, the Chalice. Pretty good in this spot. They probably don't have a land, actually, since they did the Aether Vile trick. Uh, I think we have to take this for now. I think in the past, oh, that was pretty terrible. I think in the past, Goblins has been sort of okay for us, but now that it's combo-oriented, it just becomes like way harder to contain what they're doing. Uh, I'm not going to tap out for Silvergill here. Just to play a land and pass, which is just ridiculous. <sighs> Opponent maybe cycles Peatland on their end step. Plays a 4-drop um, through Vile. Next turn... Okay, Curtain Maker, you got it. Maybe they just have two or three, like four drops at this point. Let's see. I'm pretty sure we have the uh, the four drop coming this way, um, since they were you know angling for that for a little while. All right, so at this point, we have no devotion. 
Trickster is a good draw. Okay, all right. Um, let's just play the land and trickster something. End step four drop. Gonna draw them a bunch of cards, maybe. Oh. Ah. <laughs> uh. So now all I need is a sack outlet, and uh, this is just lethal damage. I guess if they play a sack outlet, I could... No, nah, I mean, Trickster would turn something off for the turn, like Putrid Goblin, but then on my upkeep, they would just get me with infinite damage. Okay, well, um, Sling Gang, I think that is a sacrifice outlet, right? Yeah, I think that's kind of lights out here. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. Let's, let's let him bring the attack, I guess, right? Oh, but let's see. Well, you know what? Hang on a second. Uh, this, it's not... Hmm. Yeah, because they can just sack everything and deal damage, right? I mean, this is going to do damage to me when it enters back from this guy anyway. But it's not infinite, right? Because they don't have, um, like, Grumgully or um, the Artifact Lord. Oh, wait, I can do it that way, right? And that won't come back, right? But they can still just sack their other goblins, and it's all... I'm going down to two, and this just kills me. Oh, well. Chalice, I guess, not the best against Aether Vile decks, and we've played against humans and goblins at this point. I've never been a big Chalice main deck player, but the thought was um, that with Luris in the format, there's tons of zero drops and one drops. Uh, you got Urza playing all of those zero drops and one drops. Uh, so anyway, I think moving forward, I probably wouldn't play with Chalice in the main. If anything, I'd probably move it to the sideboard. Uh, Relic deals with the combo, so maybe that comes in, like all of their, I mean, Echoing Truth is okay, but they have a lot of ETB stuff, so I don't actually know if Echoing Truth is really the way to go. Um, it could bounce, like, an Aether Vial to set it back, um, but... Like that game, imagine, you know, what, e what Echoing Truth would have done. I guess we could have Echoing Truth like uh, the Persist Creature or Grumgully or something. So the Chalices can just come out, I think. It's just not good against uh, Aether Vile decks. I mean, it can, in theory, buy us a turn, but they could also just replay their their combo piece. So let me figure out how to sideboard here, I guess. Relic is a more robust way to answer their combo, I think, because it's based around Persist, right? So we just crack a Relic with Persist on the stack. Deprive, not amazing, again, because of Aether Vial. All right, so all the counters out. Bring in now at least one Echoing Truth.
Well, unless they have the mana to replay the spell that I bounced. Or, or just vial it back in. But it is interaction uh, against a combo deck, so it can come in. Uh, I do like Lords. I do like Master of Waves. Um, I do like Spreading Seas. Um, I think I just cut. Like, Brazen Bar is just worse than Echoing Truth here, I think. And then... I don't know. A Rejury, maybe. I haven't been getting the best hands, I don't think. Um... All right, well, this is better. So what is the bottom here? Um... They do have Crater Maker, which is pretty annoying. Um, I think I get rid of the Relic since I've got at least one way here to deal with some kind, you know, some kind of combo piece. Um, we do need to keep on a Mulligan to six um, some pressure with our creatures. If they play like a Prospector or something, I can just, just tap that thing down next turn. Okay, Ether Vial. All right, it was a pretty slow opening for both of us, I guess. Are you guys, uh, do you guys have work today? Are you, have you been not working because of COVID or um, what, what, what's going on with you guys today? Just home playing Magic? I have to work, but not until like 4.15, so I had some time. Okay, opponent just cycling peatland, that's interesting. Uh, is it time to violin this tide? Binder. Um, I think it maybe is, but working from home, pretty much done for the week. Sweet. Um, I mean, let's ugh, let's put this tide binder down. Draw a lord. It's a bunch of bunch of pressure. Pretty awkward. I keep this on too, just in case we draw Silver Gill. My relic is sort of okay. Uh, I don't think they ha like they're 
Let's see. And we may as well get the other ether vial going. So they've had nothing, nothing so far. This is a little bit scary. They probably got a handful of three and four drops. I might just be priced into like cycling this relic sooner than later. G guys, thoughts on cycling relic now? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I don't know. Maybe I could let it ride for another another turn. Well, that seems sort of okay. Um So we've got the dismember. I feel like we can just kind of crack in here, hold up the Lord, um, and dismember. Okay, they're just taking this. So I think I next turn we're going to possibly have 10 damage on board. Super weird. <laughs> super, super weird. What's going on? Opponent just trying to see like how, how uh, merfolk goldfishes, I guess. Science experiment. So now are they just going to go off all at once or try to? Jesus, what is going on? I can't not vial this in. Maybe they accidentally kept a hand with all lands and ether vials. Have you guys ever seen a game like this against goblins? It's turn six and they haven't played a goblin. So I think like trickster is kind of the nuts here. Just gonna crack this grove real quick. A. Hey. So they can have like two creatures and, in theory, I guess a couple of goblin, well, explosive guys or whatever. Why are you saying no? <laughs> this is fine. Totally fine. They can't combo off from here. No, I wanted the triggers. I wanted to be able to untap a land. Let's... I wanted the reader. I guess I was thinking I wanted the regery trigger, right? But if I use it just to untap land, it doesn't really matter. But then what is the downside of casting it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I guess we... we... <laughs> We have two mana up then for Dismember and, and Relic. Yeah, you're right though. If I'm going to just untap a land anyway with the Regery trigger, I might as well vial it in. But anyhow, that was you're so uh you're so dramatic with your capital letters and and <laughs> No! I'm s i am apologize. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, anyhow, I, I don't know what was going on with the opponent's hand there. Um, that was not the strongest Merfolk hand, but... Uh, well, I mean, we can, we can activate Aether Vial and put Merfolk Trickster onto the battlefield, and then something else can happen before the trigger resolves as well, right? I, anyhow, uh, Violing it would have been slightly better, but only because I would have had two lands up instead of one. I mean, that's a difference, so in, in that sense it's strictly better, but it's a pretty, pretty minute difference, I think. Okay, um, pretty sure this is a keep. Opponent kept seven again. Land, please. Even Muta Vault. Ah. Yeah, no, I see that. Um, tapping out for a second with the Rejury trigger on the stack. Okay, opponent on one land. Me with two lands. I think just bodies, right? Like we can spreading seas later. Well, spreading seas seems pretty good right here. Um, vial again right here? I guess it does let me have the sort of most explosive curve, which is probably the most important thing. But look, we can go like Silvergill um, next turn, I don't know, sees um, plus a two drop. Anyhow, yeah, I think you're right. I like it. Just double up our curve. Opponent didn't have uh, the second Aether Vial. They didn't have the second land. If they have Munitions Expert, we still get to have a an Aether Vial, right? Um, Okay, Skirk Prospector. Ah, Putrid Goblin. Well, that's a second combo piece. Things looking pretty grim for us. Um, <laughs> well, you know, honestly, like, what is happening here? What do they got? Right, so they get to sack this forever now, but um, it doesn't do anything. Ye oh, it makes infinite mana. Ugh. All right, so turn three, infinite mana. Uh, this could not have been stopped by either Silver Girl or Spreading Seas, so there's nothing we could have done differently. Um, and with only red mana, it's possibly maybe possible that they... Okay, well, there's a red cap, so I guess now we're toast. <laughs> Turn three kill. Awesome. Yeah, I get it. Tell the opponent GG's. It's like, you know, druid combo. Like, not a lot that Murpho can typically do against this kind of stuff. Well, at least it was fast. <laughs> they ripped that second land. That that was really what did it, I guess. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure, like, they, they probably would have had another two or three turns to draw that land. All right. Anyhow, uh, that was a bit rough. Um, be right back. Just give me give me one sec.
So I was trying to think just now if um, like the blue-green uh, build like of Merfolk would have been doing better in this league so far. Like I'm 1-2, I lost to humans and I lost to goblins combo. Uh, it's possible that playing just like more lords um, would have done it against humans. But the games that I lost, they had like 11-11 champion of the parish and collected company for Thalia's lieutenant and Mantis Rider. It's like I... I feel like Master of Waves is uh, would would have been good in that match. Uh, I just didn't draw it. I don't think. And uh, against goblins, I don't, I don't think there's anything anybody could have done except pack um, like four dismembers. All right, we're gonna we're gonna keep plugging away. It does feel nice to play Merfolk. It's 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 much smoother to play um, than Soul Herder. Soul Herder has like 18 triggers every single turn. And so, like, I remember I used to be bugged by, like, Ether, or annoyed, I should say. I used to be annoyed by um, the fact that Aetherval forces you to place it onto the stack every turn, which is just, like, the stupidest thing. But now, like, just, like, clicking, like, once, it's, it's, like, it's, like, nothing to me. It used to piss me off, but <laughs> I click so many times every match with Soul Herder that, like, Aethervile is, is cute in comparison. Are most of you guys watching right now Merfolk players? Obviously, Tux Dev is. Um, hey, we got a hand that we don't have to mulligan. But it's a Urian deck, and I don't recognize the, uh, the pilot, Chrissy G. Cool. Uh, opponent's starting with seven, so I'm going to start with seven. Uh... Okay, so this is like um, Urza with Urian. Or maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's uh, Soul Herder with Kiki and they have a basic mountain. All right, no one drops. Well, we have a dismember. That counts. Seems like a matchup um, where Chalice could do work. I might just go Chalice next turn. Putting our power spike in the mid game isn't good anymore. Um, you're saying uh, Master of Waves, I guess, right? So this looks like a Quaddle to me. It could obviously be like a um, a Monoleak or something. Maybe against Blue, they're thinking maybe we should resolve our Quaddle while we have the chance. Uh, in which case, I'll probably just play the Chalice of the Void. No, all right. Just passing still, cracking now instead. Um, Well, we don't play Chalice in the deck to not play it when we get it in our opening hand. So if this gets monoleaked, you know, so be it, I guess. One fewer counterspell for the rest of the game. But it got down, so... I guess they could eventually Cryptic Bounce it if they really want to. Quaddle incoming. Opponent probably has relatively little idea what I'm playing. Um... Merfolk is not extremely popular right now, and, you know, Oboro sees play. Is this going to be Uro now? It is. One tapped out. Um, spreading C is pretty bad in the matchup here. Um, dismember probably not going to be super relevant. I guess against, like, Urza it would help. Um... Well, we're drawing land, so this is nice. Um, I wonder how impactful this chalice is being, how many one drops they have in hand. 
Cool that they can't cast their astrolabes, though. So I guess my follow-up to asking people if they're Merfolk players is, are you guys playing blue-green? Are you still playing mono-blue? Um, uh, Teferi, um, kind of annoying, but maybe not the end of the world. Uh, I don't know that this dismember is going to get too much more value. I, if they play Urza, it could. Um, we can, of course, trickster the Coatl down next turn, so maybe I'll just hold the dismember for a while. I know I have a trickster because I revealed that to Silvergill, um, but we... Oh, they're bouncing this, huh? Um, interesting. Yeah, but they're, they're a ways away from casting Uro as things stand. Well, a little bit closer now, I guess. Oh, it's another Astrolabe. Okay, um... All right, well, we can't do anything anymore because Teferi's down. But we can at least get him off the board. It's always important. Okay, I kind of like just um, trickstering down this Coatl playing another um i guess just get chalice of the void back down seems okay So again, opponent knew that I had that in hand. At this point, they don't know the rest of the cards in my hand. <laughs> it's not blasphemy, man. Just, just getting back to my roots. It's been a while. Opponent didn't love having this on the battlefield, so... Attacking Teferi down does get them one card closer to casting Uro, which is kind of annoying. I'm one and two. I lost to humans, and then I got turn threed by um, goblin combo. Oh my god, Is this, is, uh, this could very well be a Soul Herder deck. This could be a Soul Herder deck. <laughs> it's messing with me. Which means, hopefully, that they don't have a lot of counter spells. I, this is all fine. Like, just going to resolve Master of Waves. Uh, but it does mean that, well, that fetch is annoying because that's going to get them closer to Uro as well. Um, it di didn't look like a Soul Herder deck at first. Like, not at all. Astrolabes, Coatles, Uro, Teferi. And now here's the Coiling Oracles. Are they tapping out for a Soul Herder? Oh, they're just playing another Uro. Okay, well, that's going to fill up the yard. Only one card away at this point. Uh, so Lord off the top is probably best. We just crack in for nine. Five card Muldrifter now. Come on, Lord. Let's go. It's supposed to be a good matchup uh, for, for Merfolk, but not if we don't draw Island Walk. Come on, eight of them in the deck. Well, bouncing all the ETB is not the best in the world. Um... Huh. So maybe I just play a, I mean, develop more devotion, uh, go like Silvergill, hold up Trickster to eat their Ice Fang when it attacks next turn. Um, 
Bounce, bouncing the Labes, I mean, they're going to play Orion, I guess, right? But, um, yeah, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to spend my mana and my tempo just to prevent them from drawing one card when they've got, like, what's the difference between drawing five cards and drawing four cards? I think it's just, like, go big with Devotion, play Master of Waves, maybe draw Island Walk. I could still draw Island Walk here. So I am going to reveal... I'll reveal Trickster. I don't really want to reveal Master of Waves. So maybe they're going to crack in. Maybe they crack in with um, the Ice Fang before Orion, and I can at least get that out of the picture with another Trickster. I, c I can dismember uh, Orion if that's what they go for. Um, so here it's just Trickster, dismember, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm sort of interested in attacking here into these oracles. Yeah, that's fine. So they know about the master. They don't know about the trickster. I'm hoping I can snipe the Ice Fang Kawaddle. If they have another land, they could go Uro and Urion. It's a lot of value. They're going for Uro. Oh, Scape Shift. <laughs> um, Scape Shift, huh? Let's see. I can crack this Grove. Um, I've got main deck dis um, deprives. Doesn't give me enough mana. Um, bouncing something doesn't seem good. Maybe we can... All right, let's just... I guess we let it resolve. <laughs> so weird. Um, escape shift. I'm at 17 life. I don't have any life gain in the deck. In fact, I have anti-life gain in the form of Dismember. So it's not a Soul Herder deck. It's a weird, rampy, five-color deck or four-color deck. It's probably Bring to Light, I guess. It's Bring, bring to Light Scape Shift. Well, I do have Spreading Seas to prevent future zombies. Um, and these are all coming in tapped. I have a feeling they're going to get in with the Kawadal, which means I can eat it. Um, Master of Waves. Oh, they're going Valakit. <laughs> That's not zombie time. They got their Triomes. So I just think we're just dead here, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 18 damage to our dome. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's nothing I can do here. Um, I want to, like, ephemerate something. All right, so what do we do against, let's see, bring to light Uro Scape Shift. Bring in more counter spells. <laughs> hey, this is fun, man. This is why we play Magic, right? Like, I want to play against this random stuff. All right, cool. <laughs> GG, opponent. GG. All right, let's go to sideboarding. I love it. What a cool deck. Um, Relic, obviously a winner. I'm not going to bring in my Singleton Ceremonious Rejection for their Astrolabes. Uh, Echoing Truth doesn't seem good. It's all ETB value all the way down. Um, Chalice was weak. It's been, it's been weak all, all league. Um... Spreading seas, kind of unnecessary. I could hit a Valakit, but like, not really, not not really my path to victory. I don't think. 
uh, this 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 setup is starting to feel better. Master of Waves historically weak to Valakit, but it looks like they're just trying to one shot me. Uh, Tidebinder could be good against Uro. Um, you know, I mean, it could be the thing is they definitely play islands, and that's a huge reason to play Spreading Seas. Um, like if they've already giving us access to Island Walk, hitting their Singleton Valakit or whatever off of. Uh, with spreading seas is not not a plan. I think I want to lean on. So uh, so yeah, I'm not I'm not going to bring in spreading seas. Um, and with relics, and I'm not sure that four tide binders is really necessary. Um, what else would we cut out? Again, the bounce seems poor, so brazen borrower can go away. If, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Bring to Light, so I like the Forces, I like the Deprives. Um, pr again, probably don't have a lot of removal. All right, so um, they have Orion, so Dismember seems okay. Um, I guess I'll trim like one Reedry, one Master of Waves. Actually, you know, they're probably running like Paths. I feel like Lord, the Lord Planish is better than... They're, they're also going pretty wide, so we're looking to like punch through instead of go wide. So I feel okay taking out the Master of Waves. They're probably going to board in more removal, I would imagine. Um... This is a very, very good hand. Minus the extra ether vial, but you know, you can't hope for perfection. I mean, you can hope for it, but you can't expect it. Opponent is on six cards. So yeah, we just want to rip creatures at this point. Anything, I guess. Okay, tap land. I like it. Ugh, didn't really need that. So yeah, saying this this build is weird is an understatement. It's just this person's creation, and you know it's it's a lot of good cards. So, are they gonna get an island here? I bet they're getting an island here and playing something like a coiling oracle. This is why Soul Herder tends to be weak against Merfolk. Is like turn two you do things like coiling oracle, and then you get attacked for like six with island walk. I'm thinking hard though. I think they just maybe realized Island Walk. We're saving the force for Scape Shift or Bring to Light, something like that. Definitely not going to force any spot removal or any. Um, ah, there's that basic island. You love to see it. Okay, let's go creatures. Creatures all day. Ugh, so good. This is my clock here. I'm going to swing for three. They go to 16. Uh, next turn, I will have 12. I swing for four. The 12 uh, becomes 15 if I draw another lord. Swing for four now, and they go to 15. Um... I mean, they could be playing like Anger, uh, in which case getting the, the Lord down now is typically pretty good. Um, I don't think I really have to counter anything next turn. So yeah, we just press the advantage here. M make the opponent regret getting that basic island. Now, I imagine next turn is going to be something like Uro. At least, you know, that's what their plan is, I think. They could just have Wrath of God or something like that. That'd be annoying. But double white? I don't know. Seems a bit... 
All right, we're tapped out here. So if any of you guys aren't following my channel, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you if you gave me the follow. Um, I'm around like 98 followers right now, and Twitch unlocks certain things when you get to like 100 followers, 150 followers, that kind of thing. So um, if you guys would like to be notified when I start streaming, that's what a follow will do for you. Okay, well now we can hardcast for us, that's fun. So things are looking pretty good for us this game. Yeah, Verdict is obviously a possibility. Um, I think they, let's see. They didn't hit a land drop last turn because they got a land from Sakura Tri Builder. What did, um, what did Coiling Oracle reveal? Okay, opponent just concedes, so. Hopefully we just get another hand like that. <laughs> Sarcasm, merfolk, yeah. Attack for lots of damage with, with Island Walk and you just win every game. Super overpowered. Uh, all right, I think we just run it back unless you guys have any suggestions. Like, did I mess anything up with the sideboarding? Yeah, that makes sense because otherwise um, Steve wouldn't have been in the revealed card zone. So yeah, I think I just run this back. Uh, balance is bad. Uh, we do want Lords over Master of Waves. Um, Regery, I don't know if I want to trim one Regery. Like, that's the... Yeah, I do, I do want the Lords. So, I mean, really, like, Trickster is not doing a whole lot um, except contributing Devotion for Master of Waves. So I think I can trim a Trickster. Um, Tidebinder is just going to be better in the matchup. Nah, I think I like counter spells. Like the counter spell felt really good in hand there. <sighs> I mean, tr we did want bodies, right? So, <sighs> cut a force. No, but Urian, Urian is a is the big dismember target. Like Urian is a way I just lose through combat. But do we cut a force or a deprive? I guess we cut a force. Um, hope to draw Ether Vial. <laughs> so many, so many conflicting opinions. We we want. Oh, hey, I can dig it. Land off the top. <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna cut lands. Look at this hand, <laughs> like. 20, I think, is already a little bit greedy. We are going to keep. They're going to Thought Seize away our Aether Vial. All right, so we got a counter. We got a uh, Graveyard Hate for the Uro, um, Tide Binder for Miscellaneous Green and Red Creatures. Aether Vial going to get us uh, some tempo. E uh, it was this, uh, yeah, Astrolabe. Relic uh, is going to be a redraw, if nothing else. Mm. Well, I like all these lords, but... Oh, fuck, guys, fuck, fuck. I clicked the wrong card. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh, my Jesus, what did I just do? <laughs> oh. Mmm, it hurts. It hurts. They were right next to each other. Oh. Mmm. No. Well, I guess on the upside, I couldn't have count. I couldn't cast anything this turn anyway. But it's slowing my curve down by a turn. Oh my god. We still have the force. God damn it. Yes, that was a punt, guys. It was a punt. On the upside, we're not facing any kind of pressure. They are hitting their lands, though. A <sighs> lot of lands. 
I don't really need more cards at this point. I kind of feel better just leaving Relic up rather than getting another card off of it. Could attack with Aether Vial next turn. Uh, they have red and white up. I feel like that could be like, I don't even know, Lightning Helix. It could just be another, like a Coatl with Astrolabe. That's more likely. We'd like to hit a land here. Um, I don't know. This game's probably going to go a little bit longer. I don't think I cracked the Relic yet. Jesus. I should have Aether Vial coming online right now. Obviously a turn behind. Apologies for, for the punt. Just got to do my best at this point. <laughs> what was that? Have your Ryan coming down next turn. I'll need to save Trickster for that, probably. Uh, so I think it's just, just cast a Lord. This is not a Merfolk, it's a Snake Elf. I don't think they have any Merfolk in their deck. I mean, it's not lost, but... We're a full turn behind for absolutely no reason. I mean... I don't know. Trickster Trickster is going to be good on Orion. When Orion can actually attack. So... I think next turn I'll probably just... Draw a land, hard cast, lord. Okay, well, gain some life, but kind of validates bringing in the relics. Not casting Orion is kind of interesting. How do we deny Orion a card? You're talking about like um, catch, catch the Ice Fang? I'm not sure they attack into, into two open blue mana with Ice Fang. Oh, they would attack with an empty board. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but again, I, I, do like, I do like holding up Trickster to tap down Urian, prevent some damage. But your line's probably better. Uh, denying them a card seems pretty good. Seem to have a lot of lands. So now that they've played an Uro, I feel like I might want to crack this Relic. We do have two more Relics in the deck. They probably have like two more... Um... Two more Uros maybe in the deck. So our heat lines up against their potential draw decently. All right, we could just go Ham right now. So this is definitely a two-turn clock. Um, Opponent with the remand. Uh, I mean, that's sort of okay. We're just going to put the Lord in and attack for six instead of eight. It should still just be lethal. Hey, Harabaz. Um, I am doing well during these times. My job has been um, relatively unimpacted. I just I teach piano through Skype now instead of going to people's houses. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, so anyhow, um, as I was saying, yeah, Lord Lord here plus force is just should be hopefully fine. They spent that remand, which could have. Um, anyhow, let's just focus on the the matter at hand here. So 
swing for seven. Okay, opponent in a tough spot here. Is this like a supreme verdict? The fairy. Mm, I kind of have to force to fairy, right? Because now they just go scape shift. Three, four, five, six, seven. Scape shift is exactly lethal right now. God, how obnoxious. Three cards in hand, and they're going to Teferi plus scape shift. God. It's one way to lose, I guess. Um, the opponent might be dead if I had played the Ether Vial on time. Probably would be dead. Ah, oh, okay, it's another Teferi. <laughs> it's another Teferi. Now I guess we just want to draw another counter. So, oh, but let's see. Um, bouncing a creature seems like it makes sense here. If we play two lords next turn, we can swing for nine. Opponent with the shock. They already play a land this turn. Right, sending in with the dorks. Hmm. Well, that's for your Ryan. I do want to attack to fairy down. I'm going to play a lord, just cast a lord. Although, honestly, I mean, Teferi, Teferi at this point doesn't really matter, at least not on this turn. I have no counter spells in hand. Uh, Dismember at instant speed doesn't seem super relevant. Um, full force, he says. To the face? Full force to the face, or do I hit Teferi? <laughs> To the face. To the face. I like it. And then if they... I don't know. Let's see. If they Wrath, we have uh, Trickster. We have Trickster. Um, and then activate Mutavault. Okay. Want it down to one. Could just get Scape shifted out here, but then they would have done it if they had it last turn, right? Fairy's not drawing any cards. Mm. Opponent's thinking a little bit, so should hopefully mean that we're in a good spot here. Ah, casting spells still. Uh, oh, all right. Well, uh, I think that's good for us, huh? I think this is good for us. Means they should only have. One mana, maybe two mana. They bounce whatever they want. Um, 
Can't act activate Teferi in the end step. They didn't even blink Teferi though, so. Okay, they play their land for the turn, go down to two. Um I I'm pretty sure they're just dead here. I get they could ramp with the oracles into uh like something? I don't know. I mean, they're like 90%, 95 or more uh, den here. Actually, hitting land is probably better for us here. Um, all right, opponent scooped. Yes. <laughs> that was, I, I want to say, um, sweet deck to the opponent before they before they leave the uh, the room if possible. Um, because I think it is a kind of a kind of an amazing deck. Uh, I really love when people just bring their own kind of thing uh, to leagues. Yuck! Yuck! Look at that pocket right there. Yeah. No, I appreciate you you reminding me of the punt. Uh, <laughs> that'll be uh, fun for people to watch on the replays. Um, so I have to work at four fifteen. I think I could probably get one more one more match in real quick. Going for the 3 2, uh, currently 2 and 2. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Oh, guys, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have played. <laughs> Opponent starting with 7 cards. Sorry for the language. This is unfortunate. <laughs> the five lord hand. Uh, we're going to keep this. Uh, all right, cool. Neoform. Maybe maybe we'll just lose turn one to Neoform, bring in four forces. Actually, Neoform is is I'm actually ecstatic to be paired against them. Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. Now we can just mulligan to force and we should be pretty good. I shouldn't I don't know, I shouldn't even play my island. Like now they're gonna bring in more like veils and stuff like that. I don't wanna sit through this. I don't and well, I don't know, whatever. I'll take my What do you play? What what do you play Chalice for against Neoform? Uh, Chalice on one, I guess. Like for Veil of Summer and Serum Visions. Well, they can whiff. It's extremely unlikely that they whiff, though. Um, oh, it stops packs. Stops packs. That's huge. That's massive. Like that right there. Um, but the thing is, they have a Gristle, a Gristle Brand on board now, so even if they don't get the combo right away... Yeah, stopping packs is like such a huge deal, because they bring in Pact of Negation as well. Yeah, I beat I beat uh, this deck yesterday playing Soul Herder, which is like the stupidest thing in the world because like you should not you sh it should not be possible for Soul Herder. I have no I have no counter spells at all in my seven in my ninety five except for Ceremonious Rejection and and I beat Neo Brand yesterday. Opponent looks like they're going on the beatdown plan here. Which is fine. I think I might just scoop here. I'm going to run to the bathroom. I always have to go to the bathroom. Like, I drink so much water when I stream. All right. So we should have a much, much better... Was that... Yeah, we were on the play there. Um, we'll be on the play again. Opp opponent just thinking about their next move. Okay. They did it with style. 
All right, guys, I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick. We can sideboard first. Um, all the interaction, basically. So um, Echoing Truth is good to bounce like a Gristle Brand with an activation on the stack. Um, probably not going to get to Master of Waves. Brazen Borrower is also bounce. Um, Spreading Seas is kind of stupid, I think. Um, I mean, it's a blue card to pitch to force. Actually, Dismember is worse, right? So let's keep let's let's keep the bodies in, right? Um, so took out Dismember, take out Seas. That puts me at sixty. Um, could bring in Tide Binders if there are worse cards, but I think I'm sort of set. I'm gonna run to the bathroom. You guys can leave any suggestions. Well, a big upside to being paired against Neo Brand is that I'll definitely be done with this before I have to work. <laughs> Would like to play first. Uh, guys, is this a keep because of Chalice? I, I'm not exactly sure how valuable Chalice is. It's obviously really important against the packs, but they can go off without the packs. Um, it's got a clock. It's got disruption. The only thing it's missing is, is uh, an actual counter spell. Tuck says Mull, interesting. All right, I like it. Uh, There's consensus. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess this is another mulligan. Let's see if the opponent mulligans. They're starting with seven. We are going to mulligan again. So at this point, we're at five. I kind of feel like I might have to keep here. Tux? <laughs> Mull harder. They could have like Veil. They could have Veil or Pact of Negation themselves. They kept seven against a blue deck. I want Buy Shark's opinion. Buy Shark, break the uh, break the tie here. Buy Shark would unhappily keep. <laughs> Mal Malta Force and Blue Card. Yeah, but I've got four in the deck. Got a bunch of draws. I, this is this is some kind of plan. It's it's uh, stops a way to get to their combo. It stops all their counter spells, except for Chal. I, I'm gonna Tux. You get to be I don't know. I, <laughs> you get to be right, but uh, if 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 I just lose to the combo, but oh god, I'm gonna keep this.
And we can crack a waterlogged roof to dig for forests, right? They can pack, and I guess they can't pack this because then they would just lose. All right. We got turn one in game one. All right, Serum Visions is a good start for us. If we draw another Chalice, we put it on one, and we're kind of sitting pretty. Ish. <laughs> Turns off their, their Veils and their Serum Visions. There it is. What did I sideboard in? I just brought in forces. Didn't bring in any one drops. Okay, well, we got another turn. <laughs> ah, deck. Um, so here I think playing Lords is obviously better. And then if I get to something like a point where I can't play anything, I'll crack the Waterlog Grove. Maybe I keep a second blue card in hand to pitch the Force if I draw it, but I also have Deprives in the deck. They have an island. But at this point, they don't need to use Pact, right? Uh, <sighs> oh, it was such a, such a good matchup, but... Uh, I feel like if you get to five and you have some interaction with with some cards you can play, <laughs> you should, literally should mulligan to four or even three to get a force. <sighs> Opponent can just also beat me down with, with creatures, and that's probably going to be good enough, which is pretty annoying. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate. Not the best league, but I think we saw that Chalice, I don't know, maybe not the best card to have in the main deck right now. I mean, it's there have been meta games where it's been better, like uh, when Arclight Phoenix was a big deal, Chalice was kind of the nuts. If they just pass at like one life or something, I can, I can play another Lord and win. That would be kind of fun. Oh, just pass, opponent. Just pass, please. Just pass. Uh, they're probably just messing with me. Or they're just bad with the combo and they're looking and looking and just not seeing, you know, what's in front of them. Lab Maniac and... Oh, they just had it in hand. It's just like... <laughs> they just, what? What? Oh, they can do it. They can do it whenever they want now. Oh, wait. No. 
They can't, because they can't draw cards, because they would die. That's it. <laughs> I think I, I think I win. I'm gonna draw another. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. Anyhow, uh, it doesn't don't have any options here. Opponent concedes. <laughs> well, we get it. We get another chance to draw some force of negations. So it was correct to draw that. Uh, keep the keep the five, I guess. The proof is in the pudding, guys. <laughs> what a stupid deck that is. It's just like I think. Yeah, that was that was sort of ridiculous. Like, I was thinking Lab Maniac was just GG, but they didn't have another um, Nourishing Shoal to, to gain more life. <laughs> Tox, if you make a decision and it, it lets you win the game, that means it's 100% correct all the time. <laughs> no questions asked. Just like me playing Ether Vial on turn 2 against the Scape Shift deck, it was all, it was all up here. Hey, guys, we got the best of both worlds here, and the opponent's mulliganing. This is the hand right here. So opponent has six. I don't see any chan are they gonna no chancellors of the tangle. Alright, they're passing. So they're gonna turn off their packs here. Another geez, another land. Um So what are you guys saying over here? Because it's wrong not to play. Yeah, they just go for it. They've just got to go for it. Um, I mean, this is the best hand we could ho possibly hope for. It's is pretty freaking nutty hand. Um, They could still have like a pact. Oh, they can't cast pact because of Chalice, of course. Um, so yeah, things looking pretty dire for this guy. If you control four or fewer lands, search your library for a land card. Um, what? Oh, they're actually casting this thing. They set. They got a um, four or fewer lands. Search your library. Put it on the battlefield tapped. Okay, that's fine. You got it, opponent. So that's one spirit guide down. Another force. Riri J. Some Mutavault. Silvergill Adept. Okay, opponent's just passing. So if I play Regery and a Lord, I swing for four right now, untap, and I have um, Five, five, four, and four. That's 18. I don't even need to do that right now. Um, but I would like to have a two turn clock, so I, I think just playing the, the Regery is fine here. Um, So 
So this gives us four, four, three, three. So a plus is uh, a plus six. What what's happening here? Oh, destroying my my artifact. Um. All right. Well, nothing we can really do about that. So I'm just looking to counter like the Neo form or the or the um, Eldritch Evolution. All right. This should be a two turn clock, I think. Sixteen. No, it's a. Four, it's just. Four. Uh, if we don't have to counter, it's definitely lethal. Um. If we do have to counter, it's not lethal. It's 14. So we let this resolve. Let that resolve. Two cards in the opponent's hand. One of them has to be a Neoform. Is the last one a counterspell? All right, uh, opponent scooped. So we're in the money for this league, despite a uh, slightly suboptimal build for the meta, I'd say, um, with the chalices. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I, we got very, very lucky that the opponent whiffed when we mulliganed to five. Um, well, very cool, very cool. Uh, gl glad I got my entry back. That was a little bit scary at the end there. Uh, so all right, let's take a quick look at the, um, at the deck. You guys can give me some thoughts. Um, let me know, uh, you know, what, what looked good, what looked bad. Um, opponent should not have brought in the anti-artifact card. Well, uh, it's probably true, right? I mean, when you're, the, when you're the, the fast combo deck, you don't want to dilute your combo just in case I might draw Chalice, I guess. Because then for it to be relevant, they also have to like, draw their summoner's packs, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, it seems like a good card, right? I mean, it's kind of like a dread strategy, right? Where you just have to bring in the artifact hate because there are things like Cage, um, obviously Chalice. Uh, so the two waterlogged groves felt fine. I actually drew both of them in that multi five. Um, I did cycle it, I think, two or three times during the, the course of the league. Uh, Brazen Borrower felt very, very unnecessary. Um, in the main deck, and I, I kind of like having more Merfolk. I didn't get to resolve a single Master of Waves. Um, so I think I would probably trim, or just rather cut, or move to the sideboard at least, all the Chalices. Um, in favor of more Merfolk, I think that um, Harbingers would have been really good in this league. Like, imagine if, like, I think I drew two Chalices... Or maybe two, I drew two Deprives or something against humans. Maybe another Chalice or two. Like, if they were Harbingers, it would have been way better. Um, yeah, so I could see uh, cutting down the curve. I kind of like just, like, jamming Lords. I also used to, I was really high on Thassa, like OG Thassa, um, for the Scry and for the Unblockable and all that stuff. Uh, so I could see jamming a Thassa back in here. So, um, buy shark and come back to earth and uh, pessimistic scientist, um, tux dev. Uh, what, what, what do you guys think? Uh, I could, I could trim in this list. I mean, brazen bar is just this nice, flexible card. I get it. Um, and people run four of them in the main deck, and it makes sense. It's a fine card, it's a fine choice. Um, I personally prefer Deprive in the main deck over Force. Um, after playing with Force for you know months and months and months at this point, um, it's better in decks that have cards that they can throw away. Like Merfolk, with Merfolk, our cards are super precious. Um, Force is like way better in sixty card Soul Herder, uh, where we're just churning through our deck nonstop. Um, So Chalice, Chalice is going to come out, I guess. Um, Master of Waves can come out. Oh, wait, I didn't take out all my Chalices. Let's see. So I just took out six cards. Um, what does Thassa Folk look like? Seize Claim. Oh, hell yeah. I 
I this is this is bringing me back now because uh, I was on Thassa with with uh, Seven Seas for a long time, and uh, it's it's just really good. Um, so if I just like were to play this this build, basically, well, let's bring in some Thassas and Seas claims and see where that puts us, or maybe just adjust the Thassa folk a little bit. Like I don't need all of these. I would swap these things for these things. Ugh, MTGO, so annoying, making me drag all this garbage. Okay. Um, don't love Benthic Pyomancer. Clear that guy out. Bring in Regery. Oh, I've got I've got five regeries now. Um, so I don't know if you guys saw any of my gameplay with Seven Cs, but it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, if you play against like Jund or Black Green, you just kill all of their lands. Uh, obviously, Cs claim is sort of like negative card advantage, but um, where it's good, it's like super good. Uh, the meta is sort of bluish right now with all the Orion and Urza stuff floating around, which makes Cs claim somewhat worse also astrolabes uh the idea with the main idea with the seas claim is that it contributes um hard to remove devotion for thassa and then thassa just like can stay online all game thassa though often like i mean i guess in particular matchups like against path to exile matchups you'll you'll want to keep her off of um being a creature seize the lands and bouncing the cards that got through seven seas is just meme-tastically delicious <laughs> sure um and what is my missing card here is it um harbinger um mutavault mutavault did work in this league and actually you know it was a little bit obnoxious in one spot um but it was it was an attacker a few times um don't need me no I have seen Choke a couple times out of, like, Ponza. But I do like running basic islands. So this uh, should be the same mana base that I had. But for some reason, I guess there was only 19 lands in here. With a pretty low curve. Um, maybe that's okay, but... Borrower. So trim two Harbingers and bring in two Borrowers. With all the Cs, I kind of feel like I want big, beefy, like, merfolk with all the Lords. Um, so even though I'd, I've never really liked Harbinger very much, um, Seems like it would have been good in this league that we just played. I don't think we were going to beat the Goblins deck no matter what. It's possible that like a, a bounce spell might have given us another turn against the Goblins deck, but we had like no clock. It was like turn three on the play. And then I can just do like whatever with the sideboard. Um, obviously, uh, forces are there. Um, I think Tidebinder is super well positioned. So maybe I mean maybe Thos is fine even without C's claims, and we take C's claims out and just just run more Merfolk. Um, so I think uh, given our matchups, I think Tidebinder was like the right call to keep in the sideboard. Um, but it's great to have um, for any uh, black green or prowess or burn uh, matchups. So, I mean, what is the thought with Master of Waves in the sideboard? It's just that uh, he's really good against burn, 
and I guess good against mid-range strategies. Although mid-range is going to have Fatal Push and Assassin's Trophy. Um, I will tune this sideboard more another time. Um, I want to say thank you again very much to you guys for joining me. Um, my merfolk family, uh, I know I've abandoned you for a while here, um, but I do want to set up a regular merfolk streaming night. Um, I love mono blue. I don't like when people say things like like it's obsolete or it's dead or whatever. I think you know we just obviously you know we need access to some some good new cards, but Wizards isn't really giving it to us. Um, the, this deck did pretty well in in the league. Uh, I don't know that like when we lost to Goblins, I, like blue green wouldn't have done better in that matchup. Uh, it could have it could have beaten humans, I guess, but I think they kind of had the nuts. Um, well, I mean, Tux, I've, I've played a lot of Merfolk 2, and I, I know what the metagame is right now, and I just, I don't honestly see a reason why Mono Blue is just, like, so much worse than than Blue Green. Like, if you're talking about, like, racing down Tron, I mean, uh, I think Mono Blue runs Force better, right? Um, it's always going to have blue cards. I guess Blue Green probably, you know, is, is, is also going to have blue cards most of the time. Um... And, but this has this has twelve lords. This list, right? It's just that one of them comes down a touch later. Um, I don't know if people in blue green are running sixteen lords right now. Yeah, I don't know. But then blue green. Actually, I, I, I mean, I don't know is the wrong thing to say. I think I do know. Um, blue green has a less stable mana base. Uh, more painful mono base. There's tons of prowess and burn in the format, and taking damage off of all of your lands seems pretty bad. Um, it's got tons of non basics, which makes it bad to Blood Moon uh, and Magus, which I think is like pretty close to the top of the format right now. Uh, yes, we have Ether Vial, but they have Pillage, um, and. So there are upsides to mono, to blue green. There are downsides to blue green. Blue green has access to collector oof, which is very nice. Um, but mono blue did for years without collector oof. You know, we uh, played Hercules Recall. We played <laughs> things that we probably you know would rather have not played uh, if we had access to better spells. Um, so blue green is a bit faster. It's got the one drop, which is which is obviously good, but. I don't know. I think I think uh, Mono Blue has stuff going for it. More Blue Devotion. Uh, Master of Waves is a strong card. You said that it's sad, but maybe you can explain to me um, why Master of Waves is so sad. I guess I guess you explained it a bit earlier. It's just that the format is so fast, basically. And I think I think we saw that kind of borne out in this in this league. Obviously, Neo Form is super crazy fast, but. I think I would have stabilized against humans if I just ripped a Master of Waves. Like, I was, like, just begging for Master of Waves. Like, they had no flyers until the last turn or something and had a bunch of devotion on board but didn't just, just didn't draw into the Master of Waves. So it seems like Mal would have been good against humans. Um, not good against Neo Brand. Is good against burn and red decks, which there's a lot of. Uh, good against uh, Ponza. Good against uh, Lurus type decks, I think, right? So, um, I don't know. I feel like the tribe needs somebody kind of uh, fighting the good fight for mono blue. I don't feel like I'm just like running inherently like garbage cards. It's just missing Kumena's speaker eff effectively, and we're just taking less damage off of our lands. Um, <laughs> whether Seven Seas is like the best mono blue deck that we could be running is, is yet to be seen. I think that uh, I could probably just trim the Seas claims, go up more Harbingers, and probably be better better uh, better off. And it's probably what I'll do. Um, but yeah, anyhow. Um, uh, I mean, humans had pretty nutty hands. I mean, whether my creatures were two ones or uh, three twos didn't really make a difference, I don't think. I think they were attacking with four fours and four fives and stuff like that. Um, and our, our lands would have done more damage to us against humans. Maybe would have died a turn earlier.
Yeah, I mean, Loris is a good card. Um, I like the idea of running Unearth with Loris, um, so I could look into that. Uh, but anyhow, um, I'll talk to more of you guys uh, in the Discord, uh, I guess, throughout the week. Uh, I'm, I think I might try to do my Merfolk stream on Wednesday. I'll, I'll sort of um, talk to my wife about it because... I've already got a bunch of evenings booked with other activities, but um, I've been meaning to do uh, two regular nights uh, a week for a while, and um, I do want to play more Merfolk, because that's how uh, I got to know all of you guys. So um, thanks again for joining me. Please follow if you haven't done that already. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to support the channel, and I'll, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks again. Bye.